Hi, this is Jeff Love from Alternative Heating and Supplies. This is going to be Chapter 3 of installing a water-to-air heat exchanger. This is going to be actually making it work inside your furnace and inside your home. What we have done in Chapter 2 is actually install the water-to-air heat exchanger inside the plenum of the hot air furnace. So now we're going to make the water-to-air heat exchanger work inside your house seamlessly with the existing thermostats and your existing setup so that if you are unable to feed your wood furnace or your wood stove, that is using the hot air uh, water to air heat exchanger your normal furnace is going to act and work normally so that if your ho family's home and you're off plowing or whatever something else you might be doing or hunting your family's still going to have plenty of heat in the house and you don't have to worry about it. or you go on vacation that's another question when i go on vacation what do i do a lot of this is going to be talked about right now water to air heat exchanger is installed the foil tape is on everything's cleaned up we're ready to make it work now so there's a couple different ways to hook up your water to air heat exchanger to your PEX supply. Most of the people that run a use of outdoor wood furnace use a product called PEX. PEX is like a plastic material. The quality of PEX is very important. We sell a very high end grade of PEX and there's PEX out there that you can find very inexpensively. And what they do is the PEX quality is dependent on the cross hashing and the success of the cross hashing done via lights or chemicals or even a uh, machine that makes the cross hashing. We use a product called Cash Acme, it's made in America and the cross hashing has exceeded 85% which is at the higher ends. A lot of the people think that class A or B or C of the PEX pipe uh, determines its quality that is not necessarily true but anyways buy a good quality PEX you won't have any problems with it try to way, stay away from the cheap Chinese PEX uh, first of all support the United States secondly um, you're gonna have less problems I find the easiest way to convert from PEX over to a copper manifold is a simple shark bite fitting all you do is you push this on and then you take your PEX and push that on and if you want to take it apart, again, you can. The other thing nice about that, and a lot of people don't know, is that when you're installing PEX to a water to air heat exchanger, PEX, PEX shrinks and expands based on temperature. So when you first start up, the PEX will actually expand up to six inches over 100 feet. Um, and when it's cool, it'll shrink six inches. So when you're not heating, you're gonna find out that the PEX is shrinking and expanding. The nice thing about the shark bite even though it is attached and water sealed, it does flex so that if there is expansion and growth of that PEX pipe, it has no bearing or little bearing on it. The Shark Bite also comes in a coupling design, which is a straight on, so if you want to come straight in, or a 90 if you want to take a 90 bend. The other options are you can sweat it on. With the heat exchangers that I have, and with the Shark Bite, there's simple little tools that you click on to take them on and off. In this case, you're going to see me pop that off and it can be reattached. The other option is copper sweating. You need a coupling. In this case, I have a brass uh, sweat to crimp. And then you're going to sweat that in. And you're going to put on your PEX and then you're gonna need a crimping tool to crimp that down, now you're done. However, this does not, this will not move or swivel or bend. Um, so this way is, it, once it's in, it's permanent. It won't move or shift with the expanding lines. So now you're gonna to have to make up the expansion with the, the bends of the, the actual packs. Okay, one, one other thing that I wanna reiterate. I find it easier to have the bottom port as the supply, the hot water coming in and the top port being the return. The reason why is the air will get through the heat exchanger easier and the air will rise up and then blow right through the line. Now that we have the water lines hooked up, the water to air heat exchanger uh, installed, ready to go, now we've got to figure out a way to how to make it work. Uh, a lot of people say, well, can I add another thermostat? Sure you can. And you can have it turn on the hot air furnace. Uh, but I find that difficult because now you got to run a wire and you got to do all that. I have actually designed and I have a kit that I sell. And a lot of these applications, the installs, I usually carry a kit. 
And the way I designed these kits is when I was doing the installs, I would go to the install place and I would forget what I needed for that kind of install. So what I started to do is take notes of what parts I needed for what kind of install and got everything in a bag. So when I went to that install, I knew exactly what I needed and just grabbed the bag and I had everything instead of going back and forth two or three times. This is called an Aquastat Hydrocoil Kit. It comes with the shark bite fittings and it also comes with the crimp version. So if you're looking for something like this and you don't want to figure this out yourself, just call and ask for our kits. But it comes with a shark bite and then in this kit which is i think is the absolute best way to uh, install these water to air heat exchangers because now you don't have to mess with the thermostat that's upstairs this is a simple strap on aquastat and how this simply works is we're going to mount this to the water line coming in and there's a strap and everything else and basically what we're going to do here is as the furnace is calling for heat then i'm going to draw a little thermostat up here. So this is the thermostat that's upstairs in the house. And once the house calls for heat, it's going to come down to the existing wire that's already there and it ties into the thermostat. Now what we're going to do is now we have this aqua uh, this uh, water to air heat exchanger that's installed now is and the strap on aquastat is now when the thermostat calls for heat, it's actually gonna go up. And uh, in my kit, I also have the wiring diagram, so you don't have to figure this out. It's actually really quite simple, just follow the diagram. But what it does is it breaks the wires, and it says, come up to this aquastat. And what it's saying is, hey, the house needs heat. Does this aquastat mounted to this water line, is there water in the, in the outdoor wood furnace hot or not? And if it says, yes, it is, it's gonna send the signal back down to the hot air furnace and say, great, we have all everything we need. Please just turn on the fan and fan only. That's how simple it is. So when the house is occupied, the, everything turns off and then the fan is what turns on because that's gonna blow the air through the heat exchanger and distribute to the house. Now, if the thermostat comes calls for heat and you're on vacation, and comes down and goes to this aquastat and says, is the water in this line hot or not? The fire's out, outside. So it's gonna say no. So what it's gonna do is say, okay, we got no heat here, so go back to the hot air furnace and say, fire the furnace, turn on the fan, turn on the oil jet, and run normally, okay? So what that does is now it's completely seamless. So if you don't have any heat in your outdoor wood furnace, your furnace is gonna react and work normally, just with a simple aquastat. Now, when you go away on vacation, the beautiful system of this is you're going to turn your house down to about 50 degrees. You're going to load your wood stove as much as you humanly can, okay? So that stove might run for two, three, four, or even five days. I've had them run for five days. And basically, once that conversion has been made and says, I don't have any more heat here, please turn my furnace normally, it's going to save you a ton of money. And at the same time, since the water's circulating back and forth, the furnace is going to be turning on running its oil, hypothetically, and it'll actually put a little heat into this heat exchanger, which is going to backheat your wood stove outside to prevent it from freezing. A lot of people think, well, wait a minute, that's a waste of energy. Okay, you can look at it that way, but I can assure you the amount of energy that you're going to be spewing back to your outdoor wood boiler is going to be a lot less money than it is going to cost you for one meal out while you're on vacation. Uh, it's very minute, and plus with your house at 50 degrees, the draw and the demand on the house is very small. So that is the easiest way. You don't have to worry about draining your unit when you go on vacation. The nice thing is you load up your stove as much as you can before you leave, and you usually get four or five days out of it. Please let me know if you give me a thumbs up or thumbs down on the video. Ask me any other questions that I did not cover or I forgot to cover here, and let us know how we're doing. If there's any other suggestions, any other videos you'd like to see, please drop that note too. Let us know on Facebook or in the bottom comments. We appreciate your business and we look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you and have a great day.